Hello everyone, we're back here in my workshop and today I'm going to give this a skim pass and I'm going to explain what I have going on here on my email and hopefully get the quality of surfacing up for anybody who is doing this with an email. Nemel is not a surfacer, okay? Can you surface with it? Kinda. Um, I am, but it's taken me like man, many, many years to figure out how to even get close, you know, to, to acceptable surface here. Now, in this video, I'm going to try to show you pretty much 15 years of this mill and the history of surfacing, because I have surfaced and surfaced and surfaced on this mill, and I have upgraded and upgraded and upgraded this. And I've done it so much and I, that I have bugged my dad, who is a tooling engineer, to literally get into the business of cutting tools for literally this application. So this is what he has here made for this application. This is a CBN diamond insert, okay, with a little chip breaker in it. And it is for bimetal style surfacing, okay? Now, um, that is one of many factors that's going to go into this. The main factor, let me back up and just basically explain, is rigidity of the whole system. How rigid can you get the spindle to this mechanism and everything square that nothing has any movement? You can't have any vibration, you can't have anything. You can't have any spindle pressure here, which you, when you have a 12 inch cutter, you're going to have some flex. This is only 11 inch. Okay. So let me stop here and I'll show you where I started. Okay. Cause that's going to be kind of maybe where you start shelf stock style cutting tools. Okay. So let me tell you what not to get and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. So let me show you generation one fly cutter. Okay, this is what you can buy in an Enco catalog, I believe. It is 10 inch. It'll come square right and left, I guess F and R or something. Yeah, F and R, okay. Anyways, you're not gonna use any of that. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go to Kenamental and try to buy this insert holder that holds it really f at that specific angle. Do you see that angle there? That matters. It's tilted this way and it's got a three dimensional tilt. Okay. You're going to find them only with a square like I did and convert it to a round. This is a RNGN32, which is three eighths of a diameter. And this is solid CBN. This is like almost a $150, $200 insert. Okay. Now, there's our Pops old logo there. Okay, now this, with this, did pretty good. It made a diamond surface. Okay, but let me explain what happened. This here, uh-oh, hold on, I gotta hold, get this thing. I shouldn't be tilting this around. Okay, so when we did this and tested it, we found that this would flex, obviously, right here. Let me explain what's going on. You have to use a collet. This is a collet, if you don't know. I'm, I'm assuming some of you guys are beginners, and that's kind of what this... I wouldn't call it beginners. Engine builders learning how to machine, okay? And uh, that doesn't make you a beginner at all. You understand this. And But the machinist out there, you journeymen, you guys know all that what this is, okay? I'm not a journeyman. I am just a engine builder that's been learning how to machine his whole life. So this is what you have going on with a collet. It's going to grab this thing in your machine... And it's going to give you enough flex to where this gets pushed up as it starts to cut across. It's going to get that. And when it goes in between the cylinders, it's going to do that. So you'll get a very weird pattern. Um, these were not done by this thing at all. I don't think I own anything that here that is ever that still has this. Okay. We, we figured out it was not really the round insert we needed. It was rigidity in the system we needed. So don't use this thing. It's really this thing. Now, generation two, okay, I'll get into right now. 
Okay, generation two or three, I don't even know what you want to call this. That last thing, I even added a heavy weight to it at one point. That was balanced to see if that would help. It, it didn't really help outside of, uh, I don't know. I, we thought the inertia would help. Okay, it's not the case. So let me explain what I have going on now. Virtually the same tool cutter, but we used a DSM flywheel. This is like a seven bolt flywheel. What I have going on here is this bolt pattern goes right into a crankshaft hub that I've cut off. And I'm not a welder, guys. I'm sorry that you can mock my welds all you want. It works. It holds. So I have a spindle. It is a R. No, it's not an R8 shank in here. It's an NM TB30 shank. So I have this hub. There, this is actually the shank that goes all the way into here. So I wanted the shank to come way through the, this piece, which is actually the lip seal of a crankshaft. And this is journal number five. So I basically had that on center, was able to get a hole drilled through it. Okay. Then I forgot how I sized it. I think I kept boring it. And then I took it to the rod hone and I honed a heat press into this piece in the arbor. So that made this really sturdy. It is not gonna flex. I guess it is gonna flex, there's always flex, but it's gonna flex way, way, way less. Okay, so that got us to where, now that it's a flywheel, you can take this off, okay, the actual flywheel. After you put your cutter on and a weight, which they're gonna do this at the balancer. Okay, there's my balance weight. Technically, you want two of these. You put one there, one here, and you're gonna step them a little bit. So one is higher than the other. So one is for aluminum, one is for cast iron, and then you just take out this one, that one cuts, you put this one in, this one cuts, okay? That's the theory that you're gonna want. We only had one weird tool cutter at the time and it was square, and that's why I used it on this thing. Okay, so as you can see, there's my JB Weld to support this. So I'm gonna be cutting this out and taking that off, and I'm gonna be putting the RNGN uh, 32, which is actually a smaller one. You want the smaller uh, diameter, 3 eighths diameter cutter. You don't want the half inch. You'd think you want that bigger diamond in there because it has more edge or whatnot, but it's really the radius. 3 8 radius technically gives you less pressure than the uh, the uh, half inch. But I'm using half inch now. It will work. Okay, so let me stop the camera here. Okay, so now the funkiest mechanism of, of them all. I'm afraid to show this to the internet. You know, you would be too. Okay, but let me explain what's going on here. If it works, and it works better than it was... Does that make it wrong or does that make it right? Um, let me explain. Virtually this machine new, brand new, would this would fix some of the spindle play. So it cuts better. It just cuts better. This application, it stables out, stabilizes this, okay? Okay, so anyways, we have the cutter coming across here. Why do I have the wheel on this side other than that side? I'll tell you why. When the cutter comes by here, it's like at the very bottom of that cutter hits, not the side, the very bottom, and only the very bottom a little, and it pushes literally up right here. Okay, right here, you're gonna get lift. So we're gonna preload that lift ever so slightly. So when we hit full load here, 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 and we have minimal load here, we're just pre-tensioned. Okay, that's what I built this dampener. I know it looks ugly. I'm not a professional welder, but the weld holds and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Anyways, so if you're gonna surface on a knee mill, your kind of best bet is to use the flywheel so you can use a dampener, okay? If you use a wishbone style or a diamond shape one, um, you won't have that option. So, you know, really obviously, 
you want to get a real sturdy machine, you can put whatever you want on it at that point. This pile is going to get cleaned up. I'm going to retrofit it for you guys on YouTube. It's a big, huge surfacer. Peterson. Used to be a grinder. Okay, so to get back into this video, I'm going to surface this with that insert now that I've shown everything to you and uh, we'll see how it goes. Now the last episode I did on this pin deck conversion, I used a carbide insert, okay, to hammer out these. And then when I came across the deck, I really wanted to see how it would do. Now what you guys saw with me, that was a test, a tool test. You saw that, that it got dull here. And then I would put it in and it would run clean, Carbide would run clean, finish, okay? Then I would just not move the cutter to a sharp edge. I would not do that, but I would try it again. And then right about here, it would get dull. <laughs> so then I would have chatter marks. So it's not because of the machine. I mean, look, this whole thing so far, all the way across, did one edge on. And then right in here, I still have chatter from the last pass of the carbide. So that's how deep it went. I skimmed this thing. I'm only skimming one thou at a time, like the smallest skim I can do. I'm getting a good smooth surface. It's still like the, a dark gray. I don't. I wouldn't call it reflective, but this aluminum, if from the pin, is reflective, and it's going through the same tool path. But this, it just simply isn't. So it's kind of weird. You can see that shiny. Okay, sorry the cylinders are ugly, guys. They will. They will get honed. That was just because the block was so nasty, so. All right, well, let's cut this with the machine and uh, let's give it a look, okay? Now that you guys know how this setup is, I hope you learned something. If you learned something, please follow the channel. I'm gonna show you more, okay? This is not where it ends. This is just some tricks and tips on knee mill surfacing. And what me and Pops have come up with, this is not Pops. This is what I came up with, but he's the engineer on the tool, okay? And um, he also has a new tool holder that we've been working on, which is this, and it holds the RNGN 43s, 42s, and 43s, okay? Uh, a 32 is 3 eighths. The 42 and 43 are half inch, but the 42 is slightly thinner. Okay, so those are the three sizes that go in that. Okay, so if you didn't know that, you know that now. Don't forget there's one more, the sun and insert. The sun and insert will have a hole in it. In your tool holder, the screw goes in the middle, which we kind of like that. It's kind of fun, but um, anyways, follow the channel. I've got some more performance CBN tools to show you. Um, that Pops kind of wanted me to throw into the channel. Um, so yeah, but this is probably the most important is the surfacing stuff for as many small up and coming shops as we can get it in front of. So anyways, I'll show you this thing cut in a second. Okay, so I reset the table and the tool cutter here. See how we're starting to get a tool path going here. spraying with believe it or not that does help one other thing I didn't mention is I have chamfered this edge okay and the cylinders edge those all get chamfered okay I believe I'm doing about a two thou depth of cut here 
because I had a, I took the tool tip off, had to redo it. This thing is really hard to get a half a thou skim. It's either one and a half or you're not going to be doing it really. So I don't want to halfway connect. This is how fast we're going. Nice and slow. You don't want to really actually go too slow. You'll just rub the tool and drag it. So that's kind of what you can do though. The slower you go, the less load is on the spindle. That's the theory on why technically you want to go slow. You might not get a good cut because you're going to be taking too small of a chip. So there's that factor uh, to, to, to figure in here. I'll let this thing go. It makes so much annoying noise. You can hear it. Uh, that I'm just gonna like let it go and I'll show you the surface when we're done, okay? Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> okay, I did good, but hold on, let me. But we back cut. That's what back cut looks like. That is the back of the cutter hitting stuff. My high spots. So I think I was overloaded on that cut. And I'm gonna have to make one last skim, okay? Like I said, I reset the whole XY on the table and then touched off the tool. And then basically, let me get into some tech here. This is technically not, not straight up and down. It is tilted this way. You're supposed to take your cutter, put it here with a, okay? Then go back here on a part with a one thou feeler gauge I'm gonna start. Oops, on the other side, I forgot here. I'm gonna play with uh, the, the uh, uh, where is it? I forgot here. It's this, and that tilts this whole head. Okay. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a mallet and go thunk, 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 and you're gonna tighten it. And you're gonna spin this thing with a dial. I would use a dial indicator actually is what I use. And then that way I had, I tried to get a half a thou, zero to a half a thou on the tilt. Okay, so now that I have this at max pressure, I think I'm like almost completely flat is what's going on. Completely flat will do this. So if you have a CNC machine where your spindle has to stay straight, there's a possibility that you should be dragging the back of the tool. Okay, so how do we prevent that? Kiltering the head, okay? Boop, like that. Disc is now like this. Your cut is now like this. Let me go through the theory. It is bowed in, in theory, when you surface with a kiltered head. Everybody deals with it. It's not a lot, you can barely measure it. It's not like you're gonna be a half a thou here from here to here to here, okay? And if you kiltered it way too much, you would. So be very, 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 very careful, okay? That's it. Now when you put your gauge on here and measure, the gauge is gonna follow your down and up. So it will say zero, 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 zero if you're cup shaped. So be very careful. And that is why I'm dragging tool, I think, right now. Okay, I have it kiltered barely, 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 barely. Okay, before I even had that. So I'm gonna cut one more pass at one thousandths. This was a two thousandths pass, which is too high for a final pass on this setup, okay? It might even been two and a half to even three thou. But this is a test block. So far, I think I'm out 11,000 on the deck, so we're testing. Uh, most of that is because I was playing around with that bad cutter. See what it would do, kind of kind of get the talk of chatter in bimetal de decks in the conversation here. So anyways, like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to set this up for, I already set the uh, height on one more, and we're ready to go. So let's just get a rock in there. I had to cut this, so I had to move my X travel a little. What we're trying to make sure here is that we're not smearing. So I'm gonna bring 
this in about an inch. I'd rather smear just on that spot. And then when I get down here, I'm gonna move the whole cutter. Probably right about there. You want it dead nuts in the middle, really. One last thing I wanted to talk about, which I know it's noisy, chamfer all the edges. Okay, so you don't have a sheer edge everywhere. I chamfered the inside of this with a file real quick. You can use all kinds of tools for that. And then the outside of this, just a round rat tail file or a razor blade or a, anything to get that edge off and uh, it will just cut better. Okay, you don't want that cutter coming in on this sharp edge or even worse that steel edge man you can flake an insert if you're not careful um I don't, the flaking an insert is more like uh too much tool pressure so anyways we'll get into flaking of tools later i'll have my dad talk about that he's the guy to listen to on tool tool tech so i'll be doing his videos and showing his tools on another channel called Performance CBN. Um, that is not this channel. This is my DIY shop channel. I mean, I'm a little bit more than DIY at this point, but um, I guess you get my point. I have an email. I don't have a real surfacer until even this dinosaur from the Flintstones, when that thing's done, we'll have a real surfacer, but uh, and it will do a bigger blocks and everything on. This is gonna be a fun project. So anyways, stay tuned. I hope you liked my surfacing tech video. Okay, I know I'm not the no, I am not the know-it-all guys. I just, my dad has helped me out a lot and, is, and we have done a lot of theory uh, in action. Theory in action is what we have here. So uh, time to test it. I'll show you this final cut when we are done. You can see it taking out that uh, crosshatch style. Hopefully it doesn't do that again. So that would be a bummer if it did that again. So you live and you learn. I still have a little back feeding going on right there is all. That's a little bit of liquid. I'll wipe this down. All in all, it did good. For some reason, this is the only time when I cut this part that I got this ugly feed pattern. I'm not happy. I wanted this thing to be perfect, but I had to move the head to cut this. Okay, it's all real smooth. Okay, this, I can't even feel it. Okay, can't even feel it. Um. It's a hair. You see what I'm talking about right there. There's a better view of it. Okay. Not too shabby, guys. Okay. Now, only here did I crosshatch feed, which is ugly, but man, this is really smooth here. With that round insert, it's like the radius is like the bottom of that cutter is the only thing that's touching. Now up here, it did not cross hatch once they started going. So anyways, let me get real close. Okay, can't feel any of this, super smooth. See all my little tiny chips from that chip breaker doing its job. Trying to get you guys the best possible view of this you can get. Okay. Cut my fingers on this. Looks like a little smear there on the way. All right. Well, put in the comments what you think about that. <laughs> No way, shape, or form am I trying to advertise that this is the way to do it, okay? There's a hundred ways to surface heads. This is one of them, 
and it is by far not the way. Okay, go buy a $15,000 plus Burko. Go get a CNC machine. But if you're budget DIY and you happen to have a mill, you can get away with it. Okay, I wouldn't put this into production. Okay, like, hey, everyone. Um, until you get it dialed in and a profilometer. So I'm barely even offering surfacing services. Okay, this is how good I can get it. Um, well, you can see the whole shop is full of testing for surfacing. This thing, that thing. The V8 cast iron is what I was worrying out about next. Once I can get this done, I might actually be able to make some money surfacing. But when you do heads, everybody needs crack detection, seats, guide work. They want these silly things all cut. This cut, this cut, all kinds of stuff. So you need a seat and guide machine when you're getting ready to do the V8 heads. I don't have a seat and guide machine today. I've had them. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of tooling to get, which I'll show you guys all on this channel because it's my other job is doing tooling. Um, so let's sit here and this is where I'm starting. So anyways, there we are. There's my little shop. Got some tools back there. My heater. So yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video of my little uh, DIY machine shop here and how I have been able to get some decent surfaces with just minimal equipment. But you match this thing with this thing and this thing, rod machine, and this thing, the boring bar, I can get quite a bit done, okay? Um, I'm gonna show you some new tools that came in on the net for the next video. It's, uh, it's really cool. It fits in this and that, okay? But it's not a rod. It's not a rod hone, okay? But I gotta clean this shop up. It is a mess, you can see. Okay, here's my little lathe. Here's this thing. It's just filled with that. We've been taking this thing apart. So I'm going to clean this up, put some stuff on the walls, get this place, the, the extension cords all squared away, get my toolbox and stuff just out of the way, and make this little space, okay, um, a pretty good YouTube channel shop uh, for this winter. And I'm going to show you guys some stuff. And um, yeah show you how to use all these, get some different tools on them. And from there, so anyways, next video could be on, hmm, what should we do it on? I don't know, it's too dirty in here. So let me clean the place up for a few days and I'll get some cool stuff out here for you.